today I'm going to take you on a little bit of a tour of map completion within Tamriel. Um, would pe this is basically for beginners. There may be some people that don't know everything that goes on in, in uh, and maybe questions about what is this and what is that. Um, map completion was not always part of the game. It came into being, I don't know, maybe a year or so ago, a year, year and a half ago. Um, but when it came about, for those of us that had played for a lot longer without it, it was like, well, gee, this is kind of like, why? We would find everything on our own. But it actually is very helpful to find things and understand where you want to go in the game. Some people don't pay any attention to it. Others think it's pretty cool because there are quests involved with a lot of the, the uh, that will give you things and you have to follow along, make sure you do certain things. And anyway, we'll get into that when we go along. Anyway, the map completion has to do with your map. Now I just, let me go back to the beginning. I pressed I, which brings up your inventory and your equipment you're wearing. And this top bar here as well. Now, in order to go to your map, <laughs> where is it on here? I guess it's not on here. Because, oh, there it is. There it is. <laughs> you go to your map, you can hit that icon or the letter M. I'm so used to hitting the M that I don't even think about what icon to use to hit uh, hit for the, the map that comes up in game. So if you were to hit the map, this actually is a map of my house here, this, the Enchanted Snow Globe house. So that is the map of my house. And here I am, the little blue marker. And if you right click on it, it takes you out to where you are. And up the upper left hand corner, it says, OK, she's at the Enchanted Snow Globe house in East March. Now, if you hit your right click, right click again, it brings you out to all of Tamriel. And you, as you populate and do more in the game, all of these little houses and way shrines and stuff go up. And you, with your mouse wheel, you can zoom in on any certain land to do what you need to do. Now, what I'm looking for is Deshaun. And I think it's over here because I thought this would be a good one to look at as far as map completion. Because it has just about everything, but it's not huge like some of them are. And I don't have everything done here. I have the basics, but not a lot done. So we're going to click on Deshaun, and it brings up the map of Deshaun. And the map completion is here. As you can see, there's a lot of different things, and I'm going to go through each one of them briefly so that you kind of get a, an idea of what it is. The top one up here happens to do with the story quests for this particular zone for Deshaun. Now, you see the marker here is where what goes over the head of the quest giver for that particular group of quests. The first one on here is called, as you can see in the box that popped up, Bad Medicine, and then on down. And this one is the first time I've seen this, where it says complete fighting back to unlock more quests. So apparently there's more in Deshaun that that I haven't done any of these, so I don't know. And that's the first time I've seen where it said to unlock more quests. So that may be something new. Um, and you can go to the bottom down here to open the zone guide. If you want to start these and you don't know where to even begin, click this here and it will stay start zone story down below. And if you click on that, it's going to show you where to start that particular quest, group of quests. And then as that goes on, it will take you automatically through the quests. You'll find out which one is next. And it really helps to know what the name of the next quest is to kind of find it. And it will tell you at the end of each quest where you need to go on when it is a story quest. And then um, so we find out that this is where you would want to be to start the particular story quest in Deshaun and see it's in this corner over here. The next thing on the map completion are the way shrines. Now, the way shrines are the way you get around Tamriel. Um, and if you go to a place where you have never been before, when you're a brand new tune, there are no way shrines. <laughs> so it makes it rather difficult. And this is where it kind of becomes fun 
where you, if you belong to a guild and you need to find so, to get somewhere, um, it makes it a lot easier and it's kind of fun to have to tra have people you can travel to. Because when I bring up my guild, Citizens of Tamriel, and I go to the roster, and you see people that are online, and if you pick one and you want to say, oh no, that's her house, let's not go there. Say we want to go to um, Craglorn, okay? And you see this particular guild me member is in Craglorn, you right click on her and you can travel to her. And that will take you to wherever she is, the closest way shrine to wherever she or he is, are. And um, it's very, very helpful. And having five guilds, mostly you can, you can usually find someone that is in the particular territory you want to go to. Um, if you don't, then just go to anyone that's closest, and I'll show you how to, to get there next. Um, we're going to Craglorn. Here is the particular way shrine. I'll show you where we are on the map. This is within the town. There's the way shrine. This is the town of Belkarth. But if you right click on it, it will show us all of Craglorn and we're this little blue dot down here within Belgar. So what I wanted to do was go to someplace else. Say I needed to go to, let's go outside here and see if we can do this. Um, let's go to Bankarai. Yeah, let's go to Bankarai. And Go to this, whoops, whoops, don't want to do that. I want to use the way shrine. Let me show you just what happened here and all so that you don't make the mistake that I almost did. Um, when you go and you've pulled up your map and you're not pulling it up from the way shrine, way shrine directly, you're going to see down at the bottom, see where it says cost to recall? It would take 1,056 gold from me to take me to that way shrine and when I'm not using a way shrine or traveling to a player. So we are going to go to the way shrine hit oh wait a minute you know what i want to do i'm going to go to um no i guess this will do it i'm sorry this is the one thing i thought i had in mind um but you can go to, let's try this. Let's go to this particular way shrine in Craglorn and see if it will take us where I think it's going to take us. Um, no, it's not. <laughs> so sorry. We're going to jump again. Let's go here and hold on. Bear with me a moment. Oh, I know, I know, I know, I know one top of my head I couldn't couldn't remember we're gonna go to Stone Falls Stone Falls is right here and we're gonna go to this way shrine up here and we're gonna do that and say you have way shrines in one place but the territory next to it you don't have anything and you have no friends. You're all by yourself. You don't belong to a guild. And you need to get to another territory within Tamriel. Well, you can get there because there are openings in between the, the uh, different um, places that you're going. Now we're going to go up here. And you can set a marker on your map by hitting the letter F. Put your cursor, click there, and hit F. Whoop, not there. There. So that... In your bar up above, you see that little blue diamond triangle square on its side, little blue thing up there. That will show you which direction you need to head, which helps tremendously when you're just trying to hop on your horse and go. So we are going to hop on here, and we're going to go down this way, and I'll show you how you get through. This is, it's been a while since I've been over here. Yes, there's a dolmen down here, which is another thing that we'll talk about in a little bit. And we are just going to ride towards, oh, look at that dolmen. It just took off somebody. Oh, and his little lonesome is going to try and take that on. 
Well, we'll wish him luck. Um, I want to do one thing. I don't want to get sidetracked here. So we're going to travel towards that little blue diamond. And I will show you that you can go from one place to another. It takes a little longer because you have to do some actual traveling, running on your horse. And when you're new and your horse is slow, actually sometimes it's better to run on your feet instead of trying to ride a horse when you're brand new because it takes a while to get there. But this one we're still going up. We are now in Stone Falls. And, oops, that little Nick Sox, they're coming after me. Is this the way? I think this yeah. is the way, if I'm not mistaken. Nope, maybe, maybe not. Nope, that's just a fort. Yeah. It's been a while, sorry guys. <laughs> I think we have to keep going up the hill. The storm shall end you. And we'll just go on up the hill. And there we are. We hit the zone into the rift. And I'll show you on the map as soon as we get through there where the rift is and how where you've gone from one place to the next. And then we'll move on to a few other things. I'm trying to keep this short so you can get some of the basics. So here we are in the rift. Here's the map. We're way down here. And when you look at Tamriel, in the full map, this is Stone Falls. I went to this way shrine and I knew that there was a road that led up here. When you look at the map, you can see there's a road that goes up there. So there, there must be a way to get to the rift. And once you get to the rift, this is where you are, and you're into the next territory. Oh boy, we got bad guys popping up all over the place. So we're just gonna hang out here and, and uh, we'll go on to the next thing. Uh, oh, isn't that a pretty view? Look at those mountains. That's the one thing about this place. The, the, the views within Tamriel are just absolutely gorgeous. Anyway, um, that is that so far. Hold on a second, please. I just have to clear something on my phone. Oh, sorry. Sorry. Okay. Now, um, once we've done that, that's one way to get around. You want to find as many way shrines as you can. If you're uh, in a guild and there's nowhere to go and it's going to take you a half a day to run across one of the territories to get to the other side, you can always ask a guild member, a friend, just shout out in guild chat, can somebody help me get somewhere and it takes them a few seconds to pop to a territory and you travel to them and there you are. You've got that way shrine. The other way of doing it is um, totally asking someone to help taxi you through a certain territory and that's one way to get all the way shrines within friend goes to, to way shrine number one up here see in the upper left hand corner you travel to them once you get there then they travel to the next way shrine that they have and you then travel to them so as you travel to them you are picking up the way shrines the way i like to do it is to when a new section comes up is to just ride the whole thing to find all of the way shrines because you're getting a lot of other things as you do it it takes a little longer and a lot of people are in this game to go as fast as they can but this game can go for quite a while so take your time and enjoy it see the countryside and uh take a look around and pick up stuff on the way there's books lore books and everything we'll talk about that in a bit um, the next thing would be delves, these little f torches here. Now, the icons on the map, if they are white, that means you have completed that. If they are black, like this troll cave, you have not completed it. And that cross skull and crossbones is a world boss. Um, there is also a key with this map that tells you what the different symbols mean. Like this is a delve. 
And every delve, every single delve you go into has a sky shard. When you're looking for the sky shards in a particular territory, some are outside, some are inside delves. Usually the ones at the bottom of the list are delve sky shards. There's also a way you can Google just about all of this to find out where they are on maps. Just go to ESO Maps or something like that, and it'll help you if you want to do it that way. Or you can just travel along and get them as you go. Public dungeons also have the sky shard in them. Um, so it's delves, sky shards, and out in the open at this point. And things could change. I mean, we're getting another update for Western Skyrim coming up next week. And I don't know, I haven't looked at it yet. Maybe there's another place that they're adding sky shards to, but I don't think so. I think it's going to be Delves Public Dungeons and, and out in the wild. Um, anyway, that's the Delves. And as you can see, let me go to the top. Here's the... Now see, we've changed territories, so I have a different map. I don't have Deshaun up anymore. The map when I hit M is where I'm at, the Rift. A lot of you know the Rift from Skyrim. And when I went to the Rift and went into Riften, it was kind of like, yeah, this, this reminds me of the game. And I traveled all the way over, over to Iverstead and tried to see if, they actu if I could actually get to, um, oh, into the section of eastern Skyrim where that mountain is, where you go to the... Uh, I can't remember what they called it, but the guys that the the uh, guys that teach you the shouts, the dragon shouts, that quest that you go through to to start learning it. But you can't get past this point. That it's there are places that are blocked off that you know will be additional additions to the game. Because here we are in the rift, and I was trying to go here. See, because here's the rift, and I want I knew from Skyrim what should be there. Well, guess what? There's nothing there. But we are getting a new map for Western Skyrim. It's going to be added next week right there. And Blackreach is also there. Much larger than Blackreach was in Skyrim. So just to, so you know. Um, let me go back to the rift. And we'll go down here. Okay, see here's story quests. I have completed two of 18, and it shows which two at the bottom. It says, in his wake and pulled under. I probably did those ages ago and before they had this and didn't know where these lined up in the story quest, but now I do. And um, if I want to start at the beginning and find the whole story, I would start at the beginning where it says beneath the stone, and then it progressively tells you a story as you go along through the quest, which is really neat, because then you can kind of pick up what the lore is about Tamriel and everything that goes on. Because um, you've got Cyrodiil, it's bringing all the games together, because you've got Morrowind and, and uh, Oblivion and things that are very familiar in Skyrim and the previous Elder Scrolls games as well. So it kind of pulls everything together and it's pretty cool. Um, okay, the way shrines we talked about, I can't believe it. There's one in the rift I don't have. That's crazy. I never discovered it. I've only been playing this game, well, in October, it'll be four years. So, <laughs> apparently, I never discovered that way shrine, which is something that I try to do in every place is to find every way shrine available. And then uh, the delves, I did all six of the delves, and it ticks them off the list for you. And it explains what a delve is. Like here it says delves are soloable, you can do them solo, <laughs> soloable, uh, dungeons found throughout the world. Delves will always contain a single sky shard and a boss who drops item set gear. Now when you start in, in delves, when you're first starting the game, yeah, you could try it by yourself. <laughs> Maybe ones in Oridon or uh, Stone Falls in the beginning near the main towns. You might be able to after you've gone up a couple levels. You can go much faster and it's much easier if you have friends to do it with. And that's why we talk about the guild so much. It would be great to have um, friends in the guild to run and do with. And if you have personal friends that that you know in the game, then you have a friends list where you can be friends and know whether or not they are on the game with you at the same time. 
Uh, the next thing down is the rift, the points of interest. Now, these are usually um, quests within certain areas, like, let's see if we can find one on here. Let's see, I've done three of them. And like Riften is done. And here is the town of Riften. This castle used to be black, but it's now white because I completed that point of interest quest. So here's one, Scald's Retreat. Uh, let's see if it's on here. Yes, about halfway down the list, Scald's Retreat. So go to that, to that area, find the quest. It's usually a different type of quest marker. I'm trying to see if we have the quest markers on the key, but no, we don't. It's not this. It's a little different. It's just like a black arrow that is over an NPC's head. So those pop up. And, and they're usually fairly close to wherever the point of interest is that you're going to be doing the quest in. Sometimes if you get a little difficult and you cannot find the uh, quest giver, Google it. Um, because there, I know of, or ask friends if they know, but um, Googling it is usually the best way to go. Okay, so we've got lots of points of interest. And like it says up there, they're self-contained stories that explore the lore, the characters, and locations within the zone. These can award you with experience gold and gear. So you always get something at the end of a quest. Some of them are pretty cool. Some quests, um, like the Merkmire, there's a calendar Merkmire, and you go searching for all these different pieces and do the quest, and you end up with a piece of um, a calendar that you can put in a home. I mean, you actually get the physical calendar to place as a furniture item, and you can place your your uh, item within your house. And go check out the ESO Home Tours, and you'll see all kinds of stuff. And we talk about, is this an achievement? Is this a quest? Or is that something you, you crafted or purchased? And there's a whole side to this story. Really cool. OK, the Rift Pathfinder. Now this, it's called striking locales. I never knew that before. To me, it looks like an eyeball, and we always call them the eye. You know, where you're running around, oh look, there's an eye up there. Let's go see what it is. And they are places of interest within the world. Discovering all of the striking locales in a zone will award that zone's Pathfinder achievement. And sometimes the Pathfinder achievements are tied with other achievements that will give you something like a color for your die station or um, a title and the quests do this as well a title like um, I have on my character right now the title above her head is witch can't remember why I put that one up but that's her title um, you can go with no title and there's nothing over your head when somebody looks at it um, volunteer recruit Tyro has to do with your rank in in um, Cyrodiil, and and then Master Wizard, Fighters Guild Victor, Daedric Lord Slayer. I think Daedric Lord Slayer was one of the first ones I got, and that was for doing uh, dolmens in the Fighters Guild quest, and oh man, I wore that a long time, because that one, <laughs> to me, sounded really cool, and I didn't have anything else for a long time. Um, and most of these are, t are there, in fact, I would think almost all of them are tied to a certain... Um, quest involved or several quests and you can find those in another section that we'll look at later anyway okay um, set stations this is interesting because in each there's usually three just a minute my mouth is going dry I'm talking too much <coughs> Set stations are locations in the world where you can craft items with specific item set bonuses. <clears throat> okay, let's see if there's one nearby. Let's go here. I'm going to show you one because they're pretty cool and show you what it means by set locations, what the different sets. <coughs> okay, it should appear on my map somewhere. It's, where did it go? 
Did I go to the wrong one? I must have had the wrong map picked up. Oh my gosh, you guys. So, so wrong of me. This one, let's go here. Whoop. We're already at a, way, at a way shrine, so we'll use the way shrine itself to go here. And I'll show you what a set location is, what a set crafting set is. Okay. So, hop on our horse, and we take off. Yeah. Holding down your shift key while you're hitting your... This is PC, by the way, that we play on. Um, so holding down your W to go forward or whatever you have designated to go forward and holding your shift key down makes you go faster. You slow down or yeah. you step on your shift key. Which in the beginning really helps. Especially if you're traveling, if a friend of yours is well experienced and... Ugh, good luck. <laughs> okay, here we go. We are at... Let's look at the map. We are at Elda. <laughs> you pronounce it for me. <laughs> Elda Jor's Hideaway. The names in this thing are crazy. Okay, let's. I'm gonna go down and show you. This is the entrance. It is just a hole in the ground. But this is a crafting area. They call them set stations within the rift. Always loaded with tons of stuff that you can loot um, because you're always looking for things that will uh, help you in your, if you're a crafter. So you just loot everything. Anyway, uh, so here's your clothing station. You have bookshelves that we'll talk about the libraries in a little bit. Pick up everything you see, because that goes in. Here's the jewelry station, woodworking station, blacksmithing, and then the exit to go back out. As you can see, the alchemist, the enchanting, and the provisioning stations are usually not here, because those are not set-based. These just have to do with your armor and your weapons as to what set you want them. So we're going to go look at and jewelry. Uh, here is the tab that shows you what you can can make. This happens to be Night Mother. It's, it is called Night Mother's Gaze set. And it requires six traits to make this particular robe. Now, Traits are all of these items down here, like here I can, but you have to learn them. This gets more complicated and you need to go into actual um, crafting. And I have started another video on basic crafting so that you can start to learn all of these. And I don't think I've gotten to traits yet, but I'll do that next. I thought I'd better start with an overview of the map before we go any further. But what it shows us here is this particular robe is light armor. It's Breton because I have selected down here the style. I could select Red Guard, Orc, Dark Elf, Nord. And you see the style up here changes every time. Argonian, High Elf, Wood Elf, Khajiit. Thieves Guild, and then you get into some that you don't have, and the more, the different. These are, these are the basics here. Um, let's go with that. And so this is a robe for light armor, which is usually for a, a mage, somebody that is magic-based. They'll usually wear light armor. And as you create these, this particular one shows level one for a, a player that is level one. Well, at using the jute material, you increase it. You can go as high as level 14 with jute material. And it goes on to flax, cotton, spider silk, ebon thread. And these go up in rank. See, now we're into the CP category. 
that's a whole other story. And the top that you can make is CP160. That's where the armor max is out at. And here, this being a light, at for a 160 character, the armor is rated as a 1220 in damage for level 50 CP160. Now, the trait that has been placed on it is impenetrable, or that you would be placing on it, and tells you what that would do. And then as you do the set, if you were to put, to create five sets of Nightmother Gaze to wear as armor, two items adds 726 weapon critical, three items of armor adds 112 weapon damage, four items as 726 weapon critical, and then the fifth one is usually <clears throat> pretty good. It depends on what it is. Uh, when you deal critical damage, you apply major fracture to the enemy, reducing their physical resistance by 5,280 for six seconds. So if I have on five pieces of Night Mother, it can be any five pieces. You have weapons, you have jewelry, you have armor. So any five pieces will give you those five items on your character. Now, the uh, other things that are in here I showed you are the other sets. This particular has a cooking fire. Not all your set stations have cooking fires, because like I said, it's usually for particular sets. But the, this is uh, another place that you can go to just loot away. And uh, it's just interesting to go down here and see what they've got. Urns that are empty. Uh, we'll get into why I killed that spider later. And we'll go on from here. Where's the door? There's the door. Okay, so we'll bring up the, the map again. So that, and there are three here. And those are the names of the three different hideaways. The different crafting set stations. Mundus stones. This is another thing that's kind of interesting. Um, because here in the rift, they have the steed and they have the apprentice. Now that gives you a boon on your character. Down here, I have the serpent as the boon that I selected by going to one of the Mundus stones. And it... in this particular one increases my stamina recovery. I think I could probably go and change that to some... I'm going to be respecting this, this tune by quite a bit. But this is the one that I had started with. And it's, that's where she is right now. So don't go by what I've done. Things are a lot different than what I have on my tune. And they're probably going, oh my gosh, why is she wearing that? Why is she wearing that? Please don't. Because I don't, don't have it set up just right yet. Um, so... The Mundus Stones are throughout. Let's see if we can find one here. So we can see what they look like. Here's one down here. This particular Mundus Stone is down here. It doesn't tell us which one it is. So you kind of have to know which one you're going for and where to find it. I mean, when you go up to it, you'll know what it is. But until then, you, you don't know. Unless you Google it. Google ESO Mundus Stones. See what you want and, and look for it. Uh, public dungeons, there's usually one public dungeon within um, a, a territory. Uh, they are, and I'll read this to you, are open world dungeons found throughout Tamriel and beyond. These are designed for four player groups. Completing different parts of public dungeons can award you with a skill point, experience, gold, and gear. And there are several bosses within a public dungeon, and there's usually a group event which gives you the um, which gives you the skill point. It's a way to get a skill point. It's usually the group event that you get that from. And in this case, it's the lion's den in the rift. And you can see. I thought it was up at the north. Where did it go? Where is it? You probably can see it already. I am not seeing it. There's that symbol. Isn't that weird? I can't see it. There it is, way over there on the left. There's the lion's den. That's kind of a fun one, too, because you go in there, it's like an outdoor, really cool public dungeon. Okay, dolmens. Dark anchors. 
they call them world events on the map. Um, but they are these round little circles here. This, we went by one as we were going to the edge of uh, Deshaun. <coughs> this one is the Ragged Hills Dolmen. And dolmens are very good um, when you're starting out to get gear and level up a bit. Um, level up because you can't get a second weapon until you're level 15. So everybody's kind of anxious to get to level 15 so you can at least start working with two weapons. And Oridon, let me point out one. This is a good one. In Oridon, this dolmen is very close to town and a lot of newbies will go there and that's what they do. They sit there and they will go back and forth. Another place is Alakra Desert. This is very, there's a circuit they go on and hundreds, it seems like, go to the domes daily all at once and it's a little crazy. It's something you'd have to ex experience and if I were you, go to a dolmen in the Alakra Desert because it's a trip. Okay, so that's a dolmen. And what those are, I'll read it to you, it's, uh, they're dark anchors. They're things like dark anchors. They're activities that occur in the world that are best tackled by a group of adventurers. Once in a while, you can get a, one that's not too bad and do it on your own or be a much higher level and be able to do it by yourself, but it's pretty rare. Completing a world event can award you experience, gold, and higher tier gear. And that's the thing, if you're, because when, you, when you're new, you don't want to be putting on spending a lot of gold or uh, materials to craft gear in the beginning. Um, so, you, I mean, you'll have somebody craft you some training gear, or you can pick it up as you're adventuring around, and usually the best place to pick gear up is at a dolmen, and you'll get rings and, and weapons and gear and all of that to just kind of, you can put a costume over it because sometimes it does look pretty hideous. <laughs> So, it, you know, you can do that. Okay, world bosses. Now, that's the skull crossbones. And like on Saturday evenings, I belong to a guild. All we do is go do world bosses. We'll run like crazy all over. In fact, we'll do part of that tonight, Friday night, Friday afternoon, Pacific, 4 o'clock. I stream our run with Rotach. Rotach is the guild master for Citizens of, Tam Citizens of Tamriel, which is my main guild. And we run all over just killing stuff to get experience. And, and it's gotten to be quite a joke because Rotatch runs very quickly and turns a lot. And you can't, it's hard to keep up with him. So it's become, it's become a lot of fun. And then on Saturday nights, we alternate with another guild, Celestial Legacy, where they do world bosses on one Saturday evening and pick a territory and do all the world bosses and usually take a low level tune so that you can get experience and gear. And then the next Saturday we go into Cyrodiil and do the same thing. Cyrodiil is where the PvP player versus player part of uh, ESO takes place and that's a lot of fun too. Especially when you're scared and don't know what you're doing. It's pretty cool. <laughs> so, that is are the world bosses. Sky Shards. Sky Shards are pretty important because you your skill line is generated by Sky Shards. If you go to your skill, skill section, which on your bar up here is called Skills, or the letter K... Um, for every three Sky Shards, you earn a skill point. And as you go along, you can add to whatever it is you're wanting to create. Um, I'm a dual wield. This tune is a dual wield, so I have everything there. And Bow is her range weapon that she uses, and I've got everything in there already. But as you can see, if I wanted to do two-handed, okay, I don't even have certain things unlocked here. Like if I wanted to do two-handed axe, I could start to pick certain things in a class. Um, and in armor, do I medium or light armor? And you add your different skills. Passives are very important. Um, as you're going through, be sure you do put 
try to get all your passives done because those are automatic things that happen when you have certain things um, slotted on your bar. Uh, racial wood elf skills were the first that I went for because these are the skills of the particular wood elf that is what her character is. And then, of course, there's crafting, which in the beginning, if you are planning on crafting, this is pretty cool. And if you're not wanting to get into too much crafting, but you want, or say one of your tunes is a crafter, like this is my crafter, um, be sure to get Cane Eye. Try to max that out with your passives because that shows you with a glow outside where certain materials are that you can pick up. Like in this case, alchemy materials. You would have a glow showing you where all the keen alchemy ones are. The other thing that is important, and let me see if I can find one here, is hireling. Because you get in in your in-game mail, when you have these hireling, you'll get more as the more you max it out with skill points. You will receive in-game mail materials. Say for this is for blacksmithing, you'll get ores and and different things that are required to do blacksmithing. And of course, it goes down to each one of them. But those two, keen eye and hireling, I think, are the most important. If you have one crafter, that all your crafters do it, I mean, all your tunes do it, because you get that many more materials, and it's much easier than having to go out and look for certain things. Um, and over time, you end up with a ton of crafting materials. And you'll get into it. You'll see. Um, let's go on with the map. So that's Sky Shards. And a lot of times we'll do just a run. Uh, a bunch of people just go out and we'll run Sky Shards. And Cyrodiil, there are 46 Sky Shards. And uh, I don't have those yet. I really want to get those done. So we'll, we'll work with that. Okay, the last thing on the... Well, not the last thing, but the last item here on map completion are the Shalador Library Books. Now, Shalador's Library Books, you cannot get... Let me go to the... Let's go to the quest journal, which is this little book up here. And across the quest journal, these are the active quests you have going. These are libraries. I'll explain those in a minute. That's why we're here. These are the achievements throughout everywhere. Um, on the summary, it shows the, the most recent achievements that you received, the percentage of achievements. I mean, this... I barely even touched achievements, and I've been playing for almost four years. So it's amazing the amount of stuff that is available in this game to do. It goes on forever. And then, of course, the leaderboards. And it shows uh, who is where on the different trials. That's a whole other world. And who soloed the uh, Maelstrom Arena and what their score was. And then, of course, Battlegrounds is another group of um, groups of four. I haven't done Battlegrounds. I've seen it in videos and stuff. And I've got friends that do it all the time because they want to get the alliance points from Battlegrounds, which is used in Cyrodiil for PvP type of things. But anyway, that's what the leaderboards are. Let me explain to you the lore library. Now, under Maps... It says here, this is Shalador's library books. Well, you cannot, I mean, you can find them, and they would get ticked off here, but you wouldn't have them in your library yet. You have a library, and this is pretty cool. You have, this is Shalador's library, and that's the ones, the ones that apply towards the um, map completion. You've got this edict memory, which is another library of books. And then your crafting motifs. Let's start with crafting motifs. Crafting motifs are things that you can craft in certain styles, like we were looking at uh, before, the traits um, of different... Let me see if there's one I can find here. Ancient orc style, just to grab one. Um, there are 14 different books, motif books, in order to make a whole set of 
ancient orc. That would be your weapons, your light, medium, and heavy armor, um, and jewelry. So there are motifs, and this shows you which ones you have earned. Now, this one is for bows, and it talks about you actually can see the book and read it about bows. Um, and then I've also collected ancient orc chests, and it talks about the history of it and what it does. Um, so that is one library. Like it, I can see here that I have all of the Dwemer books, so I can craft anything in Dwemer. Um, one that I worked hard for is Ebon Style, which is a very good one. I'm going to be making one of my tunes this, and, and I, I got this through Master Ritz, Crafting Ritz, which is the next step up. That's the top level of crafting where you want to try to go to. Um, and that's another whole video. So that is the crafting motifs that shows you what that means. Now, the Edic Memory, you can't get this until you are um, mm. Let me go to Shalador's Library. In order to have Shalador's Library, which is the lore, say this is lore of the Alakur Desert. <clears throat> there are so many books that have ten books, and I've got five of them, about the Alakur Desert lore. And so it, part of what I have for Riften is here within the Shalador, because here's the Rift. I have four books here. Well, there's a lot more books there that I've got, so it, it also goes into the other library as well. But to get certain books, Shalador's library has to do with the lore, and you get that by starting the Mage's Quest. You cannot get this library until you have started the Mage's Quest. Edictic Memory is every book you've read within Tamriel. It will remember every single book that you've picked up and opened and read. And what's cool is if you ever want to go back to them, you can read them. And they are always there. When, um, so this is not, you cannot get this memory until you've completed the, the uh, Mage's Quest. And this you can't, you don't get this until you have learned your first crafting motif. But this one, just remember, in order to get those items there to show up in your library, you have to start the Mage's Quest. You get credit for books, but they don't go anywhere until you have the library in place. And that is the list of items in the map completion and some explanation. If, there's some, if you have other questions, um, uh, this will be on YouTube as well. I have Twitch and YouTube, and you can always ask me questions, and I will try and answer them for you. Okay, if I don't know the answer, I will find somebody that does have, know the answer for sure. Now, down here, it says, Open the Zone Guide. I showed this to you before, where it showed you to continue on your story quest, but there's other things here that are pretty interesting. Um, here is your Zone Guide. The Rift Adventurer. You get that achievement after you've completed 61 quests in the Rift. I've only done 11, so i got 50 more to go. And that's just one territory. I mean, you know, it takes a long time to finish 61 quests. Well, especially when you're jumping all over the place like I do. I love to go everywhere, do things. One day I'm crafting, another day I'm doing this, another day I'm doing that. So, yeah, that's going to take a long time. It goes on forever. Then here is um, an achievement for the Lion's Den group event. That was that public dungeon that I was talking about, the Lion's Den. And you get special achievement for completing the group event within. And it's a harder boss. It's usually multiple bosses within one area. It's not just one boss. They have bosses all throughout a public dungeon, but there will be one specific section that has a group of bosses that would be the group event. <coughs> And 
Lion's Den Conqueror. Now, I did this because I did defeat all of the bosses within the Lion's Den. And it tells you what date, which is kind of cool. This one, the Lion's Den group event, I had no clue. Um, I had been playing, let's see, I started in October. I had been playing for two months. I had a friend, I have a friend, Rotach, who's our guild master who I'd met early on. I met him in two days into the game. So the only reason I could possibly finish a group event in a public dungeon was because he was there. And this was done December 3rd, 2016, is when I completed that. So I probably had no clue what I was doing. <laughs> and they did not have this stuff other than in the achievements to find out what you had done to complete it. Now, here's a fun one. Fishing. Fishing is pretty cool. But it takes a long time. Um, I fish randomly because I... I'm not out to get all of the fish. It would take forever to get all of the fish all over. I mean, there are some people that they concentrate on fishing just so they can get the achievement, the Grand Master Angler or whatever it is it's called, so that you can get buy things in at a certain vendor. There's a boat that if you get Grand Master Angler, if that's what it's called, then you can, there's this boat you can purchase at one of the um, in-game stores with gold. And when you're decorating a house, those are the places to go. One of these days, I will go around and show you the different things that you can purchase at different vendors. Because we're seeing these things in the ESO Homes tours that I've done. I've done about three of them now, I think, and I try to do at least one a week. Um, so that you can see how spectacular it is when somebody has an imagination, how they can uh, decorate their homes. Anyway, that's a whole other section. I have one person, I won't say who, but I know of someone that has 31 homes. That includes the little rooms that you can get in the inn as well, but 31 homes. And that's, I don't think that's even half of it, actually, what you could buy. Anyway. And you can buy homes with in-game gold or with crowns. They're, you know, and not all the houses are up for sale at the same time, like my Enchanted Snow Globe house, where I, um, my main residence is for this tune. It was, it only comes up for sale around the holidays, around Christmas, because it is Christmas-based or holiday-based, I should say, December in the snow. Um, and those only come up once in a while. But fishing, this is interesting. And maybe I will show you, because it doesn't take long to learn how to fish. Let's just go outside and I'll explain it to you. And then, let's see what. And then I'm going to have to probably get off because we have an event coming up in about an hour which is our run with Rotatch, and I will be streaming that. So I want to get uh, maybe something to eat before we do that and not have this dry mouth of mine <laughs> that I've got going on right now. Okay, if you can see fishing. There are fishing holes. I don't see them here right away. Let's see if we can find one. The water bubbles up wherever there's a fishing hole. And this is a river that we're on. So you use different bait for different types of fishing. And of course, I want to do this on the spur of the moment, and I cannot find a fishing hole. This is crazy. Let's go swim across the way and see if there's anything over here. There are maps um, that people have have uh, created to show where certain things are and they will show uh, where the certain fishing holes are and they don't last very long the more people fishing the better chances of getting a trophy fish but then the hole gets fished out much quicker and it stops you have to run on to the next hole by the way when i was talking about a keen eye this is how your items for crafting show up it's a corn flower you collect it take it and it goes into your craft bag right here the ESO plus craft
craft bag. I've got to say that it's the one function of ESO Plus that is worth every penny of the monthly ESO. If you're a crafter, all of you, you have no limit on how much stuff you collect. I've got, you know, tons and tons of things in my crafting bag. Whereas if you don't do that, you uh, have to <sighs> juggle stuff and you, you won't get very far in crafting very quickly. But if you love the crafting side of the game, then yes, that's what you really need to do. Oh, there's a fishing hole. See that water popping up over there? Right there? That's a fishing hole. See, it says, and this is lake fishing. I thought it was in a river, but apparently this is a lake. Let's look at the map. Where are we? Looks like a river to me, but this has been designated as lake fishing. So, press your E if you're on PC, and it brings up all the different bait that you have. Um, it is lake fishing, so we'll use guts to fish. So it highlights it so you have the fish on the thing. On your hook on <laughs> the thing, hit E, and your rod goes out. And you sit here, and if you're fishing with friends, you sit on Discord and you talk. Enjoy the time together. And uh, you fish. And then when it goes like that, hit E, and I've collected a silver, silver side perch. But we also have a bear that just spawned behind us, so we better get to care of the bear. Oh my goodness. Before he kills me. There we go. Okay. It's probably after my chicken. Now that I think about it. So you can keep fishing this hole until it stops percolating. The water stops percolating like that. That means the fishing hole is done, and you run on down the, the lake or river, wherever you are, and find another fishing hole. And as you do this, there are fish that you need to get for the achievement of, ma of angler for a certain area. And if you do all of the areas, oh, got another silver-sided. What the heck was that? Oh, is this a dolman? No, he's just fighting bad guys. Okay. Um, and what I have in my inventory now under consumables. Where's the fish? Where's the fish? Here they are at the top. Most recent things that you will have an, a an asterisk next to it. And this is just regular. If it was a, a blue, a green, or a gold um, lettering, that's a trophy fish. And what that does, let me show you the map. Completion, zone guide here. See at the list you have 12 rare fish. I don't know what the colors of those are until you actually catch them, but there's foul water, lake, river, and no ocean. There is salt water when it's on an ocean, but the rift is landlocked. There's no ocean. <laughs> so you've got foul, lake, river, and that's it. But as you can tell, I haven't caught any of the trophy fish yet. The other thing with fish, and this is the last thing I'm going to tell you guys, is, where did that, everything's alphabetical once it goes in here. Right click, if it's just regular fish you caught, you can sell it. Um, this is worth a cup, three gold. But if you're a crafter, what you want to do is use it. And once you use it, oh, hold on a second here. Once you use it, you filleted it. You use it again. You filleted that fish. And after you've done about 100 of those, you end up making perfect row, which is a bait, and it can be used in a lot of recipes, um, provisioning type recipes, that sort of thing. And it's very expensive to get it. So fishing can pay off by doing that. That's a whole other thing in crafting is the provisioning. So I'm going to leave you here. Um, and say goodbye and I'll be back on in about an hour so I hope to see you then and uh, follow my twitch channel or my YouTube channel 
and I'll put it. It should be in the information on the uh, homepage of Twitch. Take care. Toodles.